Hello everyone, welcome to our presentation video and I'm here to explain about how the data travels from the student PC to the online learning system server. Before we go any further detail, we have to know what is OSI layer. So OSI layer is a interconnected model that characterizes and standardizes the communication function of the telecommunication or computer system without regard to its underlying internal structure and technology. And why is OSLA important? Because we will use this OSLA to see how the data or the communication happen between these two. So this <clears throat> I mean this model have seven layers which is application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link and physical. So first of all, application layer. So let's say if the student want to access the server uh, using a browser. So that browser will work as an application layer that will request content from its website, which is the online learning system. So it will return the content in a requirement format, which generate a HTTP control. Second is presentation layer. So in the presentation layer, Let's say that if a student wants to submit a file uh, or anything, the data or file will be converted into a bit stream before being transmitted so that the computer can execute the program, which is called a translation. Then the data will be encrypted for privacy purposes to carry the sensitive information, which is called encryption. Then after that, the data will be compressed to reduce the data bandwidth of the transmitter and speed up the transmission rate. Then it is called compression. And another thing is, let's say if the lecturer want to open the file to mark the, the, the student's answer and something like that, this process will happen again, but in backward, if we decrypt the data and decompress and deconverting, so it will be back in the normal form again, so the lecturer can see what the student sent to the lecturer. The third one is session layer. So let's say that if the student want to access the web server, it may the student may need to log in with the username or password to create a secure connection between the student and the server, so the unauthorized person cannot access the website. So this is called a session layer, where the person will request and the server will respond so it can create an established session between these two. So the fourth one is transport layer. So in this scenario, the data of the student that transferred from the session layer to this layer should be divided into smaller segments to maximize the probability that each one of the data is being delivered correctly to the destination. And network layer. In this layer, the packet of an IP address of the student the server will be added to the header so the student computer that connect to the modem TCP IP will ask for the local IP address of the online learning system server so then the modem respond and give the local IP address to the student's computer. And therefore, this data link layer. In this layer, uh, it's responsible to correct any error that may have occurred in the physical layer so ensure that any data transfer the error free between nodes over the physical layer. So in this case, the MAC address of the student and server will be framed and it is contained the, the packet. And lastly, the physical layer. This layer is responsible for transmitting structured data which will cross the network at the lowest layer to the OSI preference model between the physical layer of the sending and receiving devices. So the student requesting data and receiving information process take place where the, the requested data and and was in Robits and send over and received a Wi-Fi modem. And that's how and that's the explanation how the data travels from the student's PC to the online learning system server. Thank you. Hello everyone. I'm here today to share with you the experience that our team had while conducting this project. The first is learn to work in collaborative environment. So, since the start of this group project, 
every once or twice a week we had like a meeting to discuss our progress so from there we learn to plan and manage our time efficiently so that we can achieve our progress and goals <clears throat> and in group project it's also important that we manage our time and do our part correctly so that it doesn't affect others and second is share diverse perspective so when during discussion or group discussion we we will receive a lot of different opinions and ideas from others so from that we learn how to receive different kind of opinion perspective or ideas from others with the open mindset as long as it's related to our topics and second is how data com f impact our life so as you all can know that this is a group project even though it is a group project we are not i mean we are not allowed to see each other because of the covid pandemic but we able to finish this project because of the help of the data communication so we use discord as a place for group discussion and we use google drive for file sharing and even use a blog to share or upload our project so others can see so because of the data communication nowadays group assignment and group project has become very easier and third is learn how data com works so after conducting this uh, group project we can say that we have now we have a better understanding on how data communication works how data can send to others how data will be sent to others and how data share between two other devices for example we can explain how or what happened when we open up a web browser and we search something on it we can explain using an OSL layer that's it for now thank you have a nice day and stay safe